morning. Uh, okay, I will try to speak a little bit about uh, VUMAT, volumetric modulated arc therapy. Why a little bit? Uh, because I think that today the scientific um, community are discussing a lot about commissioning and quality assurance on VUMAT because there are a lot of open problems regarding VUMAT commissioning and quality assurance. So the aim, the purpose of my presentation is to give you some idea of what is VUMAT and some reference about commissioning or quality assurance. Even if to be to be honest, um, in my institution, we, we are not working today um, with uh, the reference of TG, the guidelines that uh, are usually used with the VUMAT, because our experience is that it's necessary to work not only with the machine, and usually we are uh, too much interested to the quality assurance of the machine, but it's important to know the guideline and the water we have as a reference, just to have a point, um, a starting point. Okay, VUMAT is a dynamic treatment modality. Uh, treatment modality that uh, is uh, usually defined as a complex modality because uh, during the delivery we have a gantry, the, uh, the gantry is moving uh, with MLC and uh, we have even a dose rate modulation. So because of the three parameters that are synchronized during the treatment, our idea is it it's very complex, even related to the quality assurance. These three parameters, the synchronization of these three parameters are necessary to reach a good plan in terms of conformity index, in terms of homogeneity, and in terms of dose sparing of organ at risk. Uh, in my mind, it's important to know uh, the different steps that uh, were in the road to the VOMAT. So, uh, sorry, it's easier for me. Uh, the first idea that we have uh, on uh, VOMAT is the conformal arc therapy. A dynamic arc therapy, that means that the gantry is uh, moving around the patient during the treatment and the uh, field has match uh, the target uh, thanks to the beam eye view. No modulation is uh, inside this treatment and uh, the dose rate is constant. Okay, this is the characteristic of conformal therapy. But conformal therapy is able to reach a good conformity index during the treatment with only a, a conformation, thanks only to the MLC and the gantry rotation. In 1983, Chin showed that if we work with the gantry rotation, collimator motion, that means MLC, but even collimator rotation. And uh, we work with those rate variation that uh, at that time means, uh, um, means uh, uh, different uh, weights. It's possible to highly improve conformal, conformal dose distribution. To this, from this, uh, the first step uh, was BRAIM, working on the idea that uh, we can change the weight of the field. That means in a certain, ta uh, 
certain things. So we, we are modulating the dose. Wrote a paper, the first paper, about uh, the fluence intensity modulation concept. If uh, we are able, but uh, you, you know, I think, about IMRT, if uh, we are able to modulate uh, the fluence inside uh, the field, we are able to improve uh, our homogeneity and uh, conformity index. The first example is the tomotherapy. Tomotherapy is uh, a machine. It was uh, the first machine, we have the first machine in 1993, and it is the first example in, uh, of uh, the therapy in which uh, we have uh, a gantry that uh, move around uh, the patient. In this case, uh, we have a binary collimator, but thanks uh, to the binary collimator, it's possible to modulate uh, the fluence. Tomotherapy has a problem. The treatment had a problem. Maybe that uh, today is not, uh, but uh, had a problem. Is very the treatment time is very long because uh, the coach move inside the, gant, the, the bore during the treatment. But at the same time, tomotherapy uh, was a good starting point to improve IMAT. IMAT was the first idea that not only we need to conform to move the gant around the patient. Not only we need to conform the field using the beam eye view, but we need to modulate even the dose during the rotation of the gantry. Using the LENAC machine, the LENAC we can use, oh sorry, you can, we can use the cone bin and uh, thanks uh, to the cone bin, uh, we can have uh, a time of delivery uh, very optimized, uh, very uh, short uh, respect uh, to the tomotherapy. We, I would like to show you the difference, uh, and this is uh, the, the first uh, example if we compare 3D CRT with IMAT and IMRT, we see that the idea of IMAT, so the idea that we have many gantry, but many um, gantry, uh, oh, sorry, the gantry rotating around the, the, the PTV, conformed to the PTV, the beam I view, and uh, with different uh, weight, we see that it's not possible, it was not possible the first time to obtain the same homogeneity that uh, we have uh, with the starting fix that uh, IMRT treatment. Why? We have, uh, we are using, working, if we m change the sides of the collimator and uh, we don't uh, use the BMI view, we see that it's possible to move to a homogeneity distribution conform to one and uh, uh, we see the dose over the target is more the deviation uh, is given less, and at the same time, the dose to the region at the risk, we are sparing the organ at the risk. And again, if we move with three angles, seven angles, 11 angles, 33 angles, so at the same time, we reduce the dishomogeneity in inside the target, and it is important to observe 
that uh, the integrated dose, it's uh, the same. This data is very important because in our mind, often we think that because the VUMAT or the conformal arc um, has the gantry that rotates around the patient, the, dose, the integrated dose may be higher than for IMRT. This is not true, and this is the demonstration. So starting from this experience, uh, uh, dosimetric experience uh, by Schaefer. So the Q um, observed that uh, IMRT means N field, so what M intensity, intensity level. Probably the idea is that uh, the quality of the plan is uh, related uh, to the multiplication of N and M. So we can reduce N and enlarge M, or we can reduce M and enlarge N. So the idea is that increasing the number of gantry angle, we can reduce the number of intensity level. Why we need to move on this direction? Because uh, VUMAT, in VUMAT we have no intensity level differences. So the idea is that if uh, with step and shoot, uh, seven field diameter T give us a good plan quality, that means that we, we are able to reach our dose constraints, PTV coverage. Uh, we are able to reduce the door to organ at the risk, rectum, um, parotid, and so on. So the same would be possible with say, 68 gain to angle with no modulation, because uh, the factor <coughs> is equal. It's only an idea, but this is the idea of intensity modulated arc therapy. And uh, it's easy to understand uh, with this picture. Static gantry IMRT means uh, that uh, we have different uh, entry angles with a field uh, that is it's, uh, modulated. So we have a different uh, um, fluency level. In VUMAT, we have a lot of gantry angle. It's a different from system to system. And for every gantry angle, we have a field. Every field is not modulated, but it's different weighted. In which way? Changing the dose rate of the system. And the superposition of every field give us, if, we, if you look, for example, to this gantry angle, you see that in that point <coughs> we have a three level of modulation. But just behind we have only two level of modulation. So we are able just with a um, small field very near but not modulated to obtain the same modulation that we have with a fixed gantry angle. Um, just uh, one no, survey. The question could be, is it true? Are we able to obtain with this method the same quality of plan that uh, we are able to obtain with IMRT. Um, probably up to now, we are not able to answer to, to this question. There are plenty of uh, uh, there are plenty of paper, and uh, we will uh, see uh, after trying to compare IMLT, VMAT with only one arc, VMAT with two arcs, with more arcs, how many arcs we need to reach a good plan. But 
To have an answer is very difficult, and this is uh, the question, it is the reason uh, that make it difficult even to um, choose a right, we will see, method for quality assurance. We don't have, up to now, a matrix to measure, to compare plan. In my center, we use the coverage of the PTV and some data, quantic data, for example, on organ at risk. But in other center, they use another matrix. So when we look at all these paper, we have no answer. But probably we uh, must be confident that uh, the plan must be, t must be good enough to guarantee a good coverage, to guarantee um, or low dose at organ at risk. And probably with VUMAT, we are optimizing something else. And so could be important move from IMRT to VUMAT. And what are we improving? Okay, IMRT, for example, if we look at this uh, paper, IMRT is likely better, uh, is uh, superior for better PTV coverage. Uh, only, I would like only point out okay, that probably tomotherapy is better than uh, vomit. Up to now, we can say that uh, probably this is uh, true. And a lot of article <coughs> supports uh, this idea. The same is not for IMRT. Uh, so, is better. IMRT seems to be a little better, but uh, here, vomit is a little bit superior to IMRT. What is uh, clearly true is that if we look at the MU per fraction, we have the MU reduced to a third respect to the MU of IMRT. So if we look at the time of delivery, we have the time reduced from f uh, five minutes to one minute we say for one hour, for two minutes for a treatment, yes. No, not so true. Uh, my experience, yes, VUMAT uh, treatment uh, is uh, around <coughs> two minutes. Uh, being on time, it's around uh, two minutes. So if you have two arcs, uh, is uh, one minute uh, for arc uh, be with uh, two gray per fraction. But uh, the, uh, yes, no, but the no, wall no, time, no. the beam on time, yeah. yes, only beam on time. Uh, the minimum time is around uh, two, two, two minutes, not less. Uh, because uh, even if uh, we work with the maximum dose rate uh, set in uh, your machine, uh, the system, uh, because uh, you need to guarantee the accuracy of the MLC, but we will see later, uh, works usually with less dose rate. And so the time is uh, longer than uh, one minute. But this uh, uh, one of the reasons that it's not uh, easy to understand if VUMAT is better than here. It, um, uh, regarding time, it's easier, but about the distribution, we are not uh, able to, uh, to decide. But it's uh, true. Um, I can spend only experience with uh, variant machine. And uh, with variant machine, uh, if uh, we ha uh, you have a two gray per fraction, 
or 2.2 gray per fraction if uh, your treatment is a, a simultan simultaneous integrated boost. Mm, is not uh, too far from two millimeters, uh, even in head and neck. Uh, it's around uh, two millimeters, two minutes, uh, in my experience. Uh, Eugenia? So then you have to depend on the degree of the type of modulation. You are saying that the head and neck degree of modulation measures uh, maybe the different uh, um, equilibrium between the with firing machine, it's not uh, too easy to, to stress uh, the modulation, so the time is quite uh, fixed, in my opinion. The dose rate is changing, but with Electra, it's just to have the steps, like we start with 600 and then 300. Not now, not oh, now. Now it was, uh, it was, but uh, with the new machine, I it's not a true. The they are, the they are able uh, with uh, at the same. Yes, the the, yes, yeah. it's uh, not a true. It was a true, but uh, now it, uh, it is not. But in any case, uh, it's a true that okay. <laughs> we are discussing about t two minutes, uh, three minutes, but when we. Uh, speak uh, uh, about uh, three minutes uh, with Vumat, uh, probably we have seven, eight minutes be on with IMRT. So in, in any case, we are sparing time. And the sparing time doesn't mean that uh, we can treat, uh, yes, means that uh, we can treat more patients. But uh, the important thing is that uh, we can treat a patient in a very short time so we can be more confident about uh, movement of the patient during the treatment. So probably we are reducing residual errors that we know even after a verification of the patient setup with con being portal vision or brain, um, brain lab system as you want, we have all the time residual errors. But if the time of treatment is very short, probably these residual errors is smaller, okay? So this is very important. Um, which system we have uh, uh, to plan with uh, VUMAT? Different uh, TPS. Varian, Eclipse, the system is called Rapid Arc, Philips Pinnacle, Smart Arc, Electa with Monaco or Oncenta master plan that is uh, working. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh, Rice Search with uh, a Vumat module. All these systems work in a different way. Uh, the same as uh, with IMRT, because uh, even with uh, IMRT, the optimization mode, we have a different optimization module. A module that uh, 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 uses a leaf sequence inside the optimization, and so during the optimization, you take into account all the limitation, the mechanical limitation of uh, your delivery system, or you can have uh, um, software optimizer that uh, works uh, with uh, two steps. The first one, optimizing the fluence, fluence, uh, that in that case uh, means something else, uh, we will see. And uh, after the optimization of the fluence, uh, we will introduce uh, the mechanical limitation of uh, the accelerator. Mechanical limitation that uh, with VUMAT uh, are very strong because uh, with INRT we need uh, to set the maximum leaf speed. With WUMAT, we need to set the maximum leaf speed that must be, must work together 
with uh, the maximum acceleration of the gantry, the massi maximum speed of the gantry, and at the same time, the maximum dose rate or minimum dose rate that we can use. Usually, every system try to work with the Gantt rotation working at the same speed. Why? Because it's very difficult to accelerate or decelerate the gantry because of its weight. And uh, this could be introduce an error or, or on, on the gantry position. And this error can create um, do inaccuracy on uh, the delivery dose. So even uh, uh, Varian and Electa and so, uh, and at the same time, every TPS that uh, we have seen before in the list must work at trying to set, uh, to, to fix the speed of the gantry. So we can work on, we will work at the first time on the MNC speed and on those rate modulation. Uh, okay, mm, probably we can go on. This uh, is uh, just, um, I, I would like to show, to compare, but it's not important, the two modality, Pinaco master plan and the research that uh, try to works in two steps, uh, as uh, we said before. At the first time, we they fix the arc, fix the limitation of the gantry, and then they optimize effluence for a fixed number of the gantry, and from this, they split, act, splitting the fluence in a different gantry angle, but in the second step. At the second step, they introduced the limitation of the um, delivery machine. Eclipse doesn't work in this way. Um, it's not possible to set in uh, Eclipse a rapid arc the number of, of the gantry angle. It's set by the, by the vendor equal around two degrees. But uh, there is uh, at least uh, two papers that shows that it's important to work with uh, a small gantry because uh, when uh, you um, would like, uh, you must, uh, in a commissioning, in a quality assurance, so you have to compare the calculated dose with the delivered dose. If you calculate with the gantry, that is not uh, uh, so fine in degree, but for example, you, you use uh, four degree or eight degree as it's possible with uh, some uh, TPS. At the end, uh, we will see a picture later, we will have a difference between the delivered dose and the calculated one because of the calculated is very difficult, different from the delivered one. We don't take into account all the gantry delivered, okay? Um, so we can say that uh, Eclipse has fixed the, the gantry angle to the minimum up to now possible. Up to now possible. Um, the optimization at the first time takes into account uh, the, uh, the limitation of the MLC and uh, of the uh, speed uh, of the gantry.
To conclude, if we need to move to VUMAT, as I told before, we can't say if VUMAT is better than IMRT from the dosimetric point of view, but we are sure that is better in terms of time. So what we would like to know now if it's better or it's equal to IMRT in terms of the accuracy of, of the dose delivered to the patient. And we need to move to the commissioning. Commissioning, what does it mean? To be sure that the calculated dose match with the delivered one. Problem, dose rate, variable dose rate, variable gain to speed, dynamic MNC movement. We are very confident with dynamic MNC movement. We have a lot of experience about the accuracy of the MNC position with IMRT, but we don't know nothing nothing, but we are knowing uh, something about uh, the synchronization of gantry and the uh, MSC movement at the same time variable dose rate. So we need to think uh, some test able to give us uh, the information if uh, this synchronization is accurate, uh, is enough accurate to guarantee guarantee the dose to the patient. But at the same time, we don't need to work a lot. To do a quality assurance is very expensive in terms of time. So we need to understand what it is necessary. Probably it's necessary a good method of commissioning, but we must be relaxed about a quality assurance. Um, the, it's very old, and it's a, an article by Ling, uh, I don't remember, but uh, uh, two, 2008, it's true, 2008, but it's probably uh, the first and the only paper that we can uh, take as an example to do the commissioning and even to catch tests for the quality assurance. Ling, as a big story with IMRT, and so know that we need to, knows that we need to check the, the MSC position. We are able to do with the fancy test strip where you, you check the position, the accuracy of the position of the accuracy of the gap of the MLC. We are able to do this with IMRT, static field, but we need to do the same with the gantry movement. Look that these tests are done with film. It's important, this aspect. We can do the same test with portal vision. It's easier to do with portal vision, but we, we must be sure that our portal vision doesn't move. Because this test not only guarantees us that the, posi the position of the MLC is correct, is accurate, but is an example of synchronization of MLC movement and Gantt position. So, if during the movement the PV is not stable, we will have a wrong information. So please, before you need to check the stability of your portal vision. Then we need to check the ability to vary dose rate against speed at the same time. Again, we make a copy of the same test that we thought with IMRT. We need to be sure that in that case it was the MLC, in that case is the gantry speed. We will change 
the gantry speed and the dose rate for every strip with the idea that the dose delivered for every strip, uh, strip must be the same. And to check, we will go to compare with a uniform field. And if the superposition is good enough, it means that our system is working well. Good enough? What does it mean, good enough? We need to decide a matrix. Matrix for commissioning. TG1019 uh, suggests 3% 3, 3 millimeter for quality assurance for patient. I don't remember if it suggests some criteria on a gamma matrix for commissioning. Now it is clear that 3% 3, 3 millimeter as gamma matrix, so you know gamma matrix, okay. Three millimeters, uh, three centimeters is now clear that uh, is not good to solve some errors. But even, uh, but this is a very open problem. Is not good when you are sure that uh, you are using a method to measure the error <coughs> that uh, is able to see less than two millimeter to uh, two millimeter uh, two percent. What I mean, probably I will not use Gafcomic. I will not able to solve two percent uh, dosimetric differences. Uh, I will be able with portal vision. So three percent of three millimeters is probably too large but uh, is accurate for a large number of centers that are using different system to check the accuracy of our system. So the, what I would like to point out is that when you select a criteria for a commissioning, the first question is which system I'm using to test uh, my delivery system or my, or, my, or my TPS. This is the first question. Um, going on, it's possible to have this test um, for, um, for rapid arc, is it possible to catch all the tests for the delivery machine from uh, my Varian uh, um, website? And uh, these tests are the same that, uh, that are implemented in Epica. That is an instrument very useful for quality assurance of the machine and for commissioning. In my mind, it's not useful for patient QA. Um, another article, but uh, I have no time, I can't spend more time on this uh, paper, even if uh, I think that it is a good paper to uh, understand a method for uh, commissioning. And the important aspect of the paper by Anne Van Esch is that uh, Anne Van Esch has uh, clearly in mind that we need to test delivery machine, TPS, and patient. Delivery machine link does a lot of uh, tests, so we can catch tests from link paper or from uh, Varian, if we have a Varian from uh, my, my Varian website. But uh, TPS, it's uh, the, the important aspect. We need to check, to be sure that the TPS is rightly commissioned for the VOMAT system. Why? Sorry. Because uh, 
this is an example. Probably you are not you are not able to see the field. This is the open field, so we are giving those only in this area. So we have small field in large corrimator opening, small field of axis, and uh, more a lot of MLC, very small field, tip very near. Usually, when we make a commission of the TPS, we don't check this kind of field. So it's important to move on this kind of test. And Avanesh uh, depicted has done the, a, a big effort to depict some test, small field on axis of axis Tangle groove to be sure that our system is able to depict tangle groove effect. Gantry test in, um, that, uh, in which we test the delivered dose from a small sweeping gap with gantry rotation on axis and off axis. Uh, so, in my opinion, this is the important point, and all of us must be repeat this kind of test. We have done in our institution, and um, um, I know it's not that good things, but to, we had to repeat a lot of measurement just to rightly commission our TPS for VUMAT. Um, this is uh, uh, the picture I told before you that uh, if we plan with uh, mm, gantry, a gantry angle, uh, two degree gantry angle, four degree gantry angle, or eight degree gantry angle, there is a paper by um, Masi. We have uh, a a difference from the calculated and the delivered one. And this is because we are calculated in a different way than uh, the delivering system. At the end, we must check the plan. Plan, patient plan, planned with delivered one. Thanks to a test plan verification, good for a commissioning. And again, we, okay, we must check the calculated dose with the uh, measured dose. How many systems we have? A lot. 2D system, circular system, uh, 3D system, maybe. 3D system, maybe. We are not sure that is a 3D system, but could be. So we check, we compare, calculated with measure. We need to do this. How many patients, how many test patients? Five, 10, 11. But the important thing is the criteria. <coughs> gamma, gamma index, two millimeters, I repeat the same thing, 2 millimeters, 2%, 3 millimeters, 2%, 90%, 95%. Uh, our exp experience, our check, we are using our check. Our check, uh, look, in uh, TG142, we need uh, to check the laser localization with uh, a tolerance of 1.5 millimeters. R check with R check because uh, your dosimeter is uh, in a <coughs> circular surface is not possible to correct for translation. So, what we see with R check is only the gain to rotation, an error in rotation. We are not able to see an error <coughs> in translation, X translation lateral translation. 
but uh, this uh, means that uh, one gain to a rotation, one rotational error is equal to millimeter on surface phantom. So two millimeters, two percent is not a good enough for our check because we will see our setup error and not the delivery error. Is our check uh, a wrong dosimeter? Mm, I don't know. Uh, at the same time, we needed to know that, for example, this system in the last version, not now, the new version, they corrected this problem, but uh, the first version of the ARCHEC has a um, mm, bigger arrow with a field bigger than 15 centimeter. We haven't 15 centimeter with IMAT or WUMAT, but we have a lot of field outside of axis, so in a range <coughs> of 15 centimeter. So we need to pay attention about our dosimeter. Uh, and just uh, the last things on the dosimeter. This uh, are data measured from different dosimeter of error. Hussein did a very interesting work. Intentionally introduced the MLC error from 0 0.5 to 2 millimeters. This is result, measurement results of the error. As you can see, different dosimeters have different mean value of gamma uh, and minimum because we have from 0 0.5 to 2 millimeters. But when we use the software with the dosimeter, we are not able to find a statistical differences from this dosimeter. So the software implemented by, by the vendor is, seems able to correct for uh, dosimetric resolution, characteristic of the dosimeter, and so on, it seems. Um, I would like only to say this one. Is it true that uh, we need to spend a lot of time on patient quality assurance at the machine? Is it, very, is it true that uh, we are not confident on the delivery system? Many papers now are telling us uh, that we must be confident on the LENAC delivery. We were not confident on the TPS, so we need the quality assurance and we needed to make measurements on patients to test the TPS, not the LENAC. Because RapidArc is not more critical than the IMRT and we are confident with the IMRT. We know the error in, in IMRT. You see, we have no differences with prostate and a little bit with head and neck. More with IMRT, if we introduce error, shift error in position of the MSC. And at the same time, the system is not sensible to random errors, and we have a lot of random errors but we haven't systematic errors. We needed to check our system. We, we needed to be sure that, that uh, is uh, as a long-term stability, but uh, we, we must uh, relax the susa about some error. Two millimeters, random errors, doesn't matter. There are a lot of articles that uh, tell us uh, this. And at the end, because I have no time, this has the data from the LINAC, variant LINAC. What we see here is that uh, we have no errors about uh, gantry during the rotation. This has the, our data related to 2,600 delivery. 
and then you see that uh, the error in gantt uh, angle is uh, quite randomly distributed around the zero. Not for, for all the arcs, we have a little bit of shift, but 0 0.2 degree doesn't matter. And in the same way, we have no errors. Okay, we have errors up to one millimeters in gap width, but it's randomly distributed. So, Santa, eh? Yes, from log five. It's not possible in it. Because when you check one millimeter, when you check differences in those around the 1%, it's not possible to use any kind of instrument. So log file, you, mm, these are data from the log file. You must be confident on the log file, yes. But, uh, uh, but about this, there are, I think, a lot of paper. The only problem is that uh, you check the system only 50 millisecond. And so you are not able with a 600 in the, our machine, the MU, the maximum dose rate is a 600. So you don't have many points of measurements during the treatment. You have many points if you work with 100 MU per minute. Per minute. But in any case, the long term stability here you can see only the error on the MLC position is quite good. And this is more than one year of check on the hour machine. So just to conclude, I think that uh, VUMAT uh, is uh, an important technique that we need to implement in our institution. I don't think that is uh, um, need uh, a big offer more than we have done for the IMRT. So if we are confident with the IMRT, we can be confident with VUMAT. We need to do quality assurance on the patient treatment, not to check the machine, but to check our TPS so properly. We need to reduce measurement of the machine because we have no dosimeter able to tell us nothing but we need to work more about TPS commissioning and about long-term stability to check this with a good frequency. This is my personal opinion. Thank you.